What's going on everybody? This is Justin with Me, Myself, and Dice, and you're watching the Mini Painting Desk where we are going to continue our tutorial of the Kingdom Rush Minis today with Magnus the Wizard. We are going to continue building on some of the basics that we've been working on through the Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion miniature painting series and through the previous installment of Alaria Swifthand. If you haven't checked those videos out, check those out above. Adding to our layering techniques that we worked on last time, we will be working on some object source lighting, also known as OSL, which you will see abbreviated throughout the video. OSL is when you want to use an object on the miniature as a light source itself. The one special item that you're going to need in this is definitely a wet palette. You can get around it, but we're going to paint some things very quickly and needing to paint several colors while everything is still kind of wet. So a wet palette is really going to make that a lot easier. If you don't have a wet palette, you can get a Tupperware container, some sort of plastic container or lid, put a wet paper towel on it and then put a piece of parchment paper on top of that and that will keep your paints hydrated and allow you to work with multiple paints while they're still wet. So let's get started. We are starting again with Zenithal highlighting. We covered this in the Alaria Swifthand video but just as a reminder I have primed the model in black and am now using a gray at a 45 degree angle down on the model preserving the deepest shadows in the recesses and underneath and then I will do a white from the top down. Now I'm not going to show it on screen but while I had the airbrush out I went ahead and base coated my model in Vallejo model color royal purple. To do this with the brush I just wanted to do this a little quicker so I did it with the airbrush while I had it out. Remember the key is going to be thin layers, especially with the base coat. We want these Zenithal highlights to shine through. Here I'm going to use Vallejo Game Color Dead White for some touch-ups and for the orb because I want that to be the strongest point of light source when we paint the magical flames coming off of it. So the object for the object source lighting is going to be his hand that's outstretched. To do that I want a purple light coming off of that. So we're going to start with Citadel T'Challa Lilac and we're going to make a glaze which is a very watered down or you can use a glaze medium but you want it to be very transparent and just leave the slightest hint of that color. And where I want the strongest highlights to be from this color is going to be on the left side his face, his shoulder, and the top of his arm. then going back to my white and I'm painting that into the palm of his hand just like the orb I want that to be the strongest light source and then I take a little bit of that glaze and I paint it over the middle of the orb and the palm of his hand just to give it the beginning of that lilac and purple tint. model color royal purple again with a little bit of black and I'm making it into a glaze. We're going to use this to shade the recesses of his robe. We're also going to use this part to darken the underneath of his sleeves and anywhere that really would be in shadow but I still want to read as purple. Thank you. 
next color I'm going to use is a nice deep yellow that's Vallejo model color yellow ochre. This is almost going into brown, but it's just a nice base coat for the yellows that we're going to do on this. I will again take the time to remind you that you don't have to use the same colors that I do. I just list these colors to help you if you don't know what colors you want to use to try to match the art. sure that my paint is really thin here I mix a little bit of royal purple into that yellow ochre for his stole I want to tie everything together by giving it that hint of purple and this will help us get those purple highlights from the object source lighting later on I'm going right up to where we did that lilac glaze and that's because I want to be able to use a lighter yellow there and to blend this while it's still wet. I add dead white into the yellow ochre and the purple and you can see what the color looks like here. This just highlights that I don't need to darken it first before we highlight it and we can just blend these areas together using this by overlapping them they're still wet enough and this will just give that idea of light fall off happening and then I add ochre to the lilac glaze here and I'm painting just a smaller area again this will all blend together but don't forget, this is a cartoony figure, so if your blends are blocky, it looks fine on this model. This is a really good model to practice some of these techniques on. I add a good amount of purple to the yellow ochre and give it this dull gold color and I'm going to paint the prongs that hold the orb to the wand and this will just help bring the purple when we do the flames into congruity with the staff or wand itself. paint the magical flames and this is the same way you would paint pretty much any type of flame on a model. I'm taking the two colors that I need in this case purple and lilac making a gradient out of it and then I'm adding a little white to the lightest part of the lilac and I'm going to start at the lightest color from the inside working my way out blending them together as I go. You can see 
that I'm working from lightest to darkest on the gradient and I'm not really stopping in between, I'm not worried about messing up, I can go back and blend together or touch up even more and be a little more precise after I get all the colors laid down. And after I add my royal purple to the tips of the magical flame, I felt like they needed to be blended just a little bit better, so I go backwards a little bit into a more of a mid-tone and just brush that in between to smooth it all out. I then add a little lilac back into the dead white and redefine where I want the hottest spot of the magical flames to be and just redefine that and shape it a little better. So note that I finished one flame before I started on another one, so same process starting with the highest of my highlights and that gradient in the palm of his hand and working my way out and then going back and touching up and smoothing out afterwards. Here I am just going back in and redefining the hottest part of the magical flames in his hand. I go back to that gradient and use it for our typical highlights. Here I'm going a little bit stronger on the top of his sleeve, but I definitely want to bring out the folds in his robe and anywhere that I think the light from the object would hit. So in this case it's going to be the top of that left sleeve the top of his knee and also underneath his stole in the front there's a couple folds that I just want to hit with fall off light.
color, I'm adding Vallejo model color flat yellow with a touch of that lilac glaze over the parts of yellow on the model. When doing the object source highlighting, I don't want to lose the yellow in the top of his stole, so I am going to thinly highlight that with really watered down glaze of that yellow. Then I'm going to add some white and some lilac into the yellow and make it a blockier highlight for that OSL. You can also reach back into your other highlight color and start to blend some of this together so that there's not as blocky of a transition if you want to. I go back to the royal purple for his gem base color and I'm going to use Vallejo model color medium C gray for the stone area surrounding the gem. To define the trim on the bottom of his robes, I'm using yellow ochre here and highlighting it with flat yellow. really make some of these areas pop just a little bit more I'm taking the flat yellow and adding dead white to it to highlight different areas of the yellow on the model To highlight the stone, I'm going to use lavender with a little bit of white mixed in and then with even more white and less lavender, I'm going to place a little dot on the top just to give it a hot spot. With the 
sleeve trim, I'm doing the same method as before, but I'm adding a little more purple and lavender into the mix since it's coming off of where those purple magical flames would be. happy with his clothing I'm moving on to his skin he has a darker complexion so I'm starting with Citadel's Bugman's Glow making sure that it's really thin so that I maintain the highlights that we did of the object source lighting on the other side of his face While that's drying, I grab Vallejo model color flat brown for the base color of his brown hair. For his skin highlights, I'm going to use Citadel's Katie and Flesh Tone, and I'm mixing a little bit of lilac in it for the left side of his face. Katie and Flesh Tone for the left side highlights of his face. 
And to achieve the glowing effect in his eyes, I'm using different varieties of purple and white mixed together. Now a tip for doing the eyes, I've found I have better luck using not a smaller brush, but a sharper brush. I'm actually using a size 1 here, but it has a very sharp point on it and it keeps that point very well. highlights I'm using Vallejo model color flat earth over top the flat brown that we used earlier As we get to the left side of his head, I'm adding purple into that flat earth to give it that object source highlight glow. For the highest highlights to really sell that there's light coming off of his hand i am adding a good amount of white into the flat earth purple mix Since I already had Katie and Flesh Tone out, it made a better highlighting color for the brown hair mixed with the flat earth than just adding white to it.
bring some highlights to his beard, I'm adding Kitty and Flesh Tone and white to the right side and to the left, we'll add purple to that. base of yellow ochre we are finished with the model I really enjoyed painting this a lot this is a really good solid model with great detail and not too many nooks and crannies to worry about when trying to learn to do object source lighting if you have any thoughts or questions leave them in the comments section below you can also look in our description section and join our Facebook group I would love to see posted pictures of your Kingdom Rush minis painted if you enjoyed this content think about hitting that like smashing that subscribe and tapping that bell icon so that you don't miss an episode not only do we do painting tutorials and painting Zen videos, we also do game playthroughs of fantastic solo games. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.